Love triangles, pair-ups, romantic entanglements, a decision that you often have to make in video games. Here's 10 of the hardest romantic choices you're ever going to have to make in games. Number 10, in the game Catherine, Catherine, or Catherine. Yes, that's a sentence. Catherine with a K or Catherine with a C are two pretty different people. Catherine with a K is a 32-year-old middle management employee at an apparel maker, and Catherine with a C is a fairly suggestive woman, age 22, who comes in and completely disrupts the relationship between Catherine with a K and Vincent. That's you. There are most certainly legitimate reasons to choose either. Many people do specifically prefer a personality one way or the other, and some like safety, while others like unpredictability. But if you check any message board on the internet, another big factor that comes up in this conversation is boobs. And I'm not here to make any judgments. The developers clearly intentionally designed the characters the way they did. Is there a reason other than lust you're choosing the younger Catherine? In all honesty, that's a question that the game is actually asking you. There's more than one reason, or even, let's say, two reasons, that people think Catherine is a good game. Number nine, in Fire Emblem Awakening, you kind of have a different type of decision to make. Because there's so many possible romances in the game, because the way romance is tied to battle, that perhaps one of the more interesting choices Choices is simply whether or not to pair up the female avatar and Krom. Now this can be kind of an awkward pairing, but at the same time their story kind of ends up being one that is about fate and overcoming odds. Essentially through time travel it makes for a very interesting story. Also the children involved in this pairing make for some pretty good scenes later in the game as well. Number 8. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Now as a man in Knights of the Old Republic you really kind of only have one choice and that's Bastila. But as a woman you could romance Karth or you could romance Juhani. And it's not just a choice between those two people, it's a choice between two conflicting ideologies. Romancing Karth means being a light side character, and romancing Juhani means being a dark side character. And again, that built a lot of Bioware's foundation for romance choices. Tying ideology to romance was an interesting idea that definitely panned out for future games, essentially making your choice about whether you're being good or bad in the game, completely influencing who you can romance, aids quite a bit in the characterization of everyone one involved. Number 7, Persona 4. In Persona 4, there are several different romance options, but the most obvious ones and also the most blatantly competitive in ideology and one that you can tell a pretty fair amount of what kind of person you are based on who you choose is Chie and Yukiko. Now, Chie is kind of a stereotypical tomboy and Yukiko is kind of the quiet, traditional girl. Like I said, I think these are kind of the most blatantly different characters as the other ones kind of inject various personality traits, whether it's adding a propensity for flirting, and being outgoing, or further being unsure of oneself, the other characters share more in common with these two, and therefore I don't think represent the same kind of choice that you have to make in between these two. Number six, Alpha Protocols Z versus Mina Tang. Now, Mina Tang is a little bit more professional, and Z is kind of, well, a mature woman who knows what she wants, with quite an accent. Again, Mina Tang is pretty professional and will constantly try to feel you out before she starts to even lightly flirt with you, whereas Z likes hard to get which is weird because she's pretty direct herself. C kind of appreciates you the more chaotic you act. She likes killing people, and she kind of likes it when you rescue her, although not as much as killing people. Number five, Witcher 3 with Triss and Yen. Now, the interesting thing with both of these two is that you have a history with, well, both of them. Geralt of Rivia has a long-standing history with Yennefer, and during the events of Witcher 2, he had amnesia and established a relationship with Triss. For a while, both kind of consider it a competing situation, but if you try to have your cake and eat it too, Two, it results in them kind of teaming up to troll you pretty bad. Now, they don't hate you in any way. They both obviously like you, but they don't appreciate their feelings being played with. And it's much better for Geralt if you just make a choice. Number four, in Baldur's Gate 2, you have several choices for romance. But in my opinion, the two interesting choices are Eri and Viconia. Eri has self-esteem problems, and you can help her get over those. And Viconia has maybe a little bit too much self-esteem, and is basically seeking a yes man. In my opinion, these are the two that are most interesting because again they're the most opposing in ideology. Do you want to help solve problems or do you want to just have somebody strong around you? Number three, Saints Row 4. Actually there are no choices in this game. Your only real choice is to choose whether or not you just bang everybody. Yeah I kind of include at this point it's a joke. You literally just have to press X. That's it. I mean, you don't have to not do it with anybody. I mean that's pretty Saints Row if you ask me. Number two, Dragon Age Inquisitions Cullen versus Cassandra. Now this obviously depends heavily on who you are 
far. These are by far the most popular romances in the game, and a lot of people look at it as the main choice. And you essentially make that choice by choosing who you are as a character when you build your character. Gender separates these two, which is why a lot of people go back and play through as the other gender, specifically to do the other of these two romances. They're both very interesting stories, too. Cullen is kind of a conflicted fellow, and Cassandra is, well, really, really strong, but on the inside, a complex and vulnerable person. And finally, number one, Ashley or Caden in Mass Effect 1. Now, this is a particularly interesting choice because you also eventually have to choose which one dies. So all of the various choices can lead up to a very sad point or a very awkward point, if you want. Ashley's a brash person who's very opinionated, and Caden is a little bit more of an empathetic individual. Ultimately, both characters develop a great deal and have a sense of responsibility that enables them to make the ultimate sacrifice. So, really, it's a question of personality. As a bonus, yes, Final Fantasy VII. You were thinking about it when you heard the title, and I'm going to acknowledge it right now. Like, I'm gonna say spoiler, Eris dies, and that can put quite a damper on their romance. But hey, you get to go to the gold saucer first, right? Have a nice old time? But hell, you can go out with Barrett there if you really want. It's up to you. Which video game romance did you find most compelling? Who did you choose? Let's have a discussion about that in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, of course. And if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. As always, we thank you so much for watching this video, and we will see you next time right here on Game Ranks.